So WWDC has kicked off and Apple had a bunch of blah, 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 new iOS, new iPad OS, new watch OS. But let's be honest, the thing that intrigued you and I the most undoubtedly has to be the new hardware. In particular, I'm talking about the MacBook Air, but even more so specifically, I'm talking about the new M2 processor within it. I mean, seriously, the M2 processor has come out in a very interesting time. It wasn't all that long ago Apple announced their higher end M series products like the M1 Pro, the Max, and respectively the Ultra. And now the M2 comes and it kind of beckons the question, what is it supposed to replace? Is it replacing the existing M1? But if it is, is it gonna be better than the M1 Pro? And where is it gonna kind of fall? Which kind of created this very interesting predicament for Apple. So not as officially out, we're gonna take a deep dive and see exactly what the M2 is trying to achieve and whether or not it's even in the right timeline. First things first, the M2 chip is technically speaking the direct successor for the M1 chip. So according to Apple's own website, it's up to 1.4 times faster than the existing chip. Not only that, you can configure it all the way up to 24 gigabytes of RAM or unified memory and with up to two terabytes of storage. Both are welcome improvements and make for a pretty powerful configuration. However, what you will find really interesting is that the M1 Pro chip is very careful not to make any direct comparisons with the M1 chip. And the reason for that is because if they do so, it puts a direct comparison between the M2 and the M1 Pro. So for example, if you go on Apple's website right now, you will find if you look at the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip configuration, Apple is very careful not to make any direct comparison between the M1 and the M1 Pro. This is done deliberately so, because if they do so, then people will start saying, okay, how much better is the M2 or how much less better is the M2 compared to the M1 Pro when compared against the M1 chip? And this could potentially invalidate the need for the M1 Pro chip entirely, which really isn't all that old. And it is the bread and butter configuration for the higher end 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So Apple's in a bit of a predicament where we gotta make the M2 better than the M1, but we gotta be careful just how much more better it is because otherwise it makes the M1 Pro look outdated and obsolete. Now make no mistake, of course, Apple will release updated iterations of the M2 with the M2 Pro and the Ultra and probably the Max as well, but those are gonna come later on, probably much later on in the year to be exact. Right now, the M1, oh sorry, the M2 has to be limited. Furthermore, Apple was also careful to ensure that the M2 has a Max maximum support of 24 gigabytes of RAM versus the 32 you can get on the M1 Pro. These differences can also be seen as artificial limitations on the M2 chip because doing anything more than that, again, invalidates some of their other lineup of chips, particularly the M1 Pro. So definitely interesting stuff. Now, putting that aside, I think the MacBook Air is definitely a well-redesigned product. I appreciate the fact that they've gone with a more traditional look as opposed to that teardrop design. So definitely lots of cool stuff happening. I will cover that in a separate video, but let me know what you guys think about the M2 chip. Do you think it's a fair improvement? Do you think it's in an awkward position? Or do you think that Apple has done more than enough with the M2, it's overkill? I wanna hear all your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.